Welcome back. Today, Adnan is going to be introducing an emitter technology that is driving OEM development in optical gas sensing. Can you tell us what technology you're going to be talking about? Well, Victoria, last time I was here, we were discussing our multi-stage INAS detectors and how they were disrupting the scene in the mid-infrared zone. Well, quantum cascade lasers, or QCLs, are one of the most sophisticated emitters that can be used in tandem with these detectors. They also work within the mid-infrared zone and they facilitate some of the most sophisticated systems that can be built within the optical gas sensing space. Compared to something like an LED or a lamp, which are more broadband, lasers like QCLs emit at a very specific single wavelength with a high level of coherence. This makes them great for use in high fidelity spectroscopic techniques. Our most recent developments with them are really paving the way for OEM scale adoption within a number of large industries. So do they work for the same kind of applications that you mentioned in our last talk? That's right. Specifically the ones that demand really high levels of precision and accuracy in the detection measurement or where the environment is particularly tricky to perform the measurement. As an example, we could think of vehicle pollution detection systems. This would be a system that measures the pollutive exhaust levels of an individual car as it passes through a gantry. In this scenario, you have relatively low levels of concentration of gas and it's also quite far away from your source and in an uncontrolled environment as well. But most importantly, you have to be super fast to perform these measurements as the cars drive past. QCLs are able to facilitate this. Last time, I also mentioned industrial process control, measuring exhaust levels of NO or ammonia to adjust additives. Well, with QCLs, you can take that same concept and apply it to the marine shipping industry. QCLs can facilitate cross-stack emissions monitoring on these ships where a system needs to run without calibration or servicing for often years at a time. And then lastly, I believe we talked about medical breath analysis, oxygen or CO2 monitoring. Well, in the same way, QCLs supercharge this application again. They can facilitate such precise levels of measurement that you can perform early stage sepsis or even cancer detection in patients. Wow, that really does sound like it's taking the game up a notch. Can you give a little bit of background into how QCLs work? Sure. Let me give a little bit of a history lesson and give you some context to where we are today. QCLs were first developed in 1994 and their fathers were Feist and Capasso. And this was made possible by advances in metal organic chemical vapor phase deposition techniques that create this very specific kind of layering. In turn, this allowed us to make these kind of quantum well structures. You can see it looks kind of like a cascade. Well, the first outcome of this kind of spacing is that the emitted photons will have their wavelength in the mid infrared zone. The second is that once these photons are produced and it passes through the other cascade zones, it causes more photons to be produced as it passes in a cascade like fashion, hence the name. The cascade zone becomes the internal gain medium of the laser. Can you remind us why the mid-infrared zone is important? Well, in the mid-infrared zone, you get much higher levels of interaction between the gases and the light. In those applications that I mentioned previously, you'd be interested in measuring gases like CO2, various hydrocarbons, nitrous and sulfur oxides. These absorb and re-emit light in the mid-infrared zone because this is where the actual transition lines of these gases are, rather than their harmonics in, say, the shortwave infrared zone. So compared to that shortwave infrared zone, you're looking at two to three orders of magnitude higher absorption of interesting gases. Here you'll be able to see a table of typical absorption wavelengths for some of these gases. This higher absorption is important because it means that you get much more signal in your system. 
that can lead to more reliable, more precise measurements. But actually, it's worth noting that this kind of raw QCL that I described earlier may not be enough to facilitate this kind of very precise measurement. I can imagine there has been a lot of optimization since the first QCL. Right. The first QCL in 1994 had to be cryogenically cooled to be able to even work. But as we got better at creating those cascade zones with less and less defects, there would have been less spurious heat to have to deal with. Today, we have QCLs that work at room temperature and even above. But even besides that, over the years, there have been developments to the structure of QCLs itself. First of all, to get QCLs to laze a significant amount of light, you can produce a Fabry-Perot cavity from the chip like this. By shearing both sides of the QCL and creating reflective mirror surfaces, you get those photons bouncing back and forth, creating more and more cascades. You can make a small window for the photons to escape and you get quite powerful little laser chip. However, oftentimes when you think of a laser, you might think of single mode, one specific wavelength of light emission. Actually, that's not the case with this kind of a raw QCL. The emission is actually quite broadband. Like the blue line here, for anyone who's performing high resolution spectroscopy can imagine that it's not really suited. However, we take this one step further and create a sharp red line of emission by creating a neat structure within the chip. We create a Bragg grating on the chip and the spacing between each grate determines the single mode the QCL will emit at. Now this isn't a filter, mind you. All of the wavelengths actually get fed back and produce a single wavelength. At the beginning, you mentioned how Hamamatsu is developing QCLs for OEM use. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Sure. Our standard QCLs come in quite hefty housing. They are HHL, high heat load type packaging. And this is to dissipate the large amounts of heat that the QCLs produce. Even within the years of development to get room temperature operation, it really is a tough job to cool it. So at Hamamatsu, we've been working to produce higher energy efficient chips. The power consumption is lower, meaning that they don't produce as much heat. In turn, that lower heat production means that the expensive HHL packaging can be swapped out for this neat butterfly package. This helps OEM users immensely. First of all, it's more cost effective, but even more valuable for big industrial applications is that the operating temperatures are much higher than a standard HHL QCL, meaning that they still work great in more extreme conditions, and the power demands for cooling and operating the QCL are not as onerous. Now, when you tie this new development with other features of our QCLs, you really see how we're painting an OEM-oriented picture. The way we produce our QCLs uses a unique patented stamping procedure. This means that not only do you get better yield, but the part-to-part -part variation in the characteristics is very tight and controlled. This is a real boon for engineers who are developing the electronics to work with a QCL, since they don't need to make it as sophisticated to handle that wide range. And then lastly, there's the reliability. We've tested our QCLs for tens of thousands of hours so far, with no sign of degradation. In fact, we've also conducted accelerated lifetime testing and have seen no degradation past 320,000 hours. To put this in context, if you are building an emissions detection system for a marine ship, the QCL would outlive the standard operating lifetime 17 years of the ship itself. Can you give us a summary of what you've told us today and how we're able to help people who are interested in QCLs? For sure, Victoria. QCLs are a mid-IR laser technology that facilitates very high fidelity spectroscopic applications, comparable even to mass spectroscopy machines. Over the last two decades, we've been developing our QCL technology so that it is really suitable for mass production OEM applications. They are highly repeatable at quantity with tight specifications and we've built up a strong history of supplying these in the thousands of pieces for many years. Our latest developments sees QCLs refined even further. We've produced greater energy efficient chips which allow us to produce them in much more cost effective packaging but this also has the added benefit of being much more robust. The new TBTF QCLs work at higher temperatures 
and make harsh environment operation much more straightforward. In the future, we'll be working to develop even greater efficiency QCLs, so definitely keep in touch with us. And on the topic of keeping in touch, let me mention how we're able to help people who are interested in our QCLs. We have a wealth of in-house application knowledge on how to set up and use QCLs, as well as how spectroscopic system should be optimized. And now recently, we also have a very flexible demo system that can be used to run any of our QCLs. So testing them has become easier too. I'd like to urge anyone who's interested in our QCLs to get in touch via the contact information below the video and we can send a wealth of info and support out to you.